Good morning. It's a pleasure to have your company as we take a look at the papers and try to make sense of what is behind the headlines. My name is Felicity Ezewike and I call this After the Press. I'll be joined in a bit by Ihechuku Ibeji. But let's start with a look at the Nation newspaper and what is making uh, the headlines on it. Um, Edo Governor Obaseki Shwaibu resigned from APC. That's the big one. Uh, appeal Court of Holds or Shamale's suspension as NWC Peaks Ajimobi as acting chairman. Uh, that's it on your screen. And above the um, masthead, you're looking at residents, doctors strike on as talks halt. Akaradalu, direct or indirect, Aketi is a goal. Okay, that sounds a bit funny. All right, um, what visitors must do to reopen? Uh, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. That story was captured in our bulletin earlier. Naira Mali tackles airlines CEO. In spite of COVID-19, electricity tariff is going to go up next month. That's another one for you. You see uh, details on page 25 and the reasons behind it. Uh, the pandemic uh, stalled it for about three months, according to authorities. But now they got to do what they got to do. Uh, the EPL returns as Man City hosts Arsenal. That's another one for you. And inside the paper, you'll be seeing stories of Minister Hill's media over virus battle. We came may lock down Boni. Um, for those that might not be aware, um, Boni Island has experienced uh, some uh, strange deaths in recent time from marine life to human life and the senator representing an area in that part of the country um, has raised uh, the alarm at the National Assembly. That might interest you if you um, want to know what's happening uh, with our countrymen um, on Boni Island. Okay, virus drug not approved. We know that there is one that um, currently um, has been confirmed to help. Uh, it's been confirmed to help um, patients uh, at advanced stages of uh, the infection uh, from coronavirus. We'll get to talk a bit more on that as the day progresses. But we're now joined by communication analyst and expert, uh, Ihechuku Ibeji. Um, Ibeji, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's, been, it's um, our morning, pleasure, viewers. really. Um, uh, let, let, uh, I was taking a look at the Nation newspaper before you came up. I'll just uh, try and wrap up quickly, and then we'll get your thoughts on them. Okay, um, rape is also on the front page, concerned a Nigerians forum. Uh, they're working against uh, killings. Okay, this one is not on rape, actually. It's on a protest rock banditry. Protests against banditry rock Katsina, Niger State. And that is the picture you're seeing on your screen. Apologies for thinking it had to do with rape. Rape has been so much in the news lately. Uh, but that is the uh, developing situation in Katsina and Niger State. They are concerned about banditry and the killing in recent days. Lagos Imam can back reversal of worship centers reopening. Some will lose with rising COVID-19 cases, churches, mosques, can't reopen. And then the global figure on COVID-19 has risen to over 8 million. Then, but the good news is half of that figure has recovered from the virus, so there is hope that it is not a death sentence. All right, Ihechuku um, Ibeji, uh, what is your take on the Obaseki situation? Because that's the big one. Uh, Edo Governor Obaseki Shoibu uh, resigned from APC. I think that uh, the the whole scenario that is playing out right now is quite uh, interesting. Um, a few weeks back, nobody would have um, probably um, would have guessed that or would have um, looked at it in, from this angle, uh, because at that point it seemed that um, all was all that was expected was for the incumbent governor of Edo State, Obasteke, uh, uh, to go to the APC screening committee and the expectations were not that he was going to be disqualified but with his disqualification came completely a completely new scenario uh, the pdp had been probably very um, calm in in its own activities um, especially since the department of their 
previous uh, governor, gubernatorial flag bearer, and that's the person of Ezeayamu. But with the uh, disqualification of Obasiki and um, his uh, subsequent um, resignation from the APC, quite frankly, um, the, PDP, the PDP has been agog. It is expected um, by certain quarters that um, they, they, sooner than later, there will be a kind of crossover by the current governor. Um, one thing that we must know is that um, uh, in, the, in politics, um, incubacy is a very, very strong factor um, for any uh, person who um, knows how to use it or who would like to use it, um, irrespective of uh, what people may say about a ruling party being in place. An, an incumbent governor, especially a, um, an incumbent governor that has been perceived and has been seen to be working and um, delivering, um, is one that can uh, carry the feelings of the people. As it is right now, what matters for the people of Edus, the people uh, on the streets, the people that uh, the, um, the masses in Edus State, uh, a, a governor who is paying salaries, a governor who, despite um, the economic downturn, the governor who, despite the COVID-19 uh, health issues um, is able to keep their head above waters. And the perception in Edo State to a certain degree is that this current uh, incumbent governor, Governor Basike, um, has done quite um, a lot of that. So that is going to impact a lot on okay. what we let's, shall let's be seeing so the, far. So uh, in terms of interesting times, from this, uh, interesting uh, headline. Times, I must confess. Um, I want us to look at the um, implication of the Supreme, um, the appeals court ruling on um, Oshamales Mata. He's been suspended and we have Ajimobi in. There are concerns. I, I asked the guest earlier on our news uh, as per the uh, Ajimobi is currently said to be um, undertaking um, getting treatment for coronavirus and he is incapacitated. His position was that he might be physically incapacitated, but he's not mentally incapacitated. What is your take about these concerns of people who say that you're putting somebody who is incapacitated, however you look at it, um, manning a party that is in deep crisis at the moment? I, I think from, from my, I, I, it's, uh, it's a bit interesting, a bit strange that, um, uh, this lineup of activities are happening. It seems as if um, for any onlooker that uh, the APC may have done, done a deep hole for itself in the sense that um, at this time, you need a very strong leadership, a very um, uh, a leadership that's proactive to be able to you know, salvage the situation that they currently are in. Now, this appeal court judgment does not do, do any good for its um, uh, uh, um, chances at the adjusted polls. And then going back now to also um, announce a, a, a leadership that is uh, a leader who is currently um, reportedly not um, fully up to it, is, it, for, it throws the whole thing into, confu into more confusion. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, we would, one would have expected that uh, if it is true that um, Governor Jim Obi, who has been named as the acting chairman, is... Uh, not going to be up to it, they would have named a stronger uh, leader, leader who would uh, take the bull by the horn and try to salvage uh, what is all gradually looking like um, an unfortunate situation. Uh, so we, we don't exactly know what is playing out in their minds and um, what the intrudes really are, but you know, they don't look, they don't look very uh, coordinated right now. For the, 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 the Punch newspaper is also the running government. with that story. Uh, Diaz is not uh, Basaki leaving the APC. Diaz is appeals court upholds or Shomale's suspension. Uh, Basaki heads for PDP. There's been no official word from the governor. Let's let's be be sure about that one. As at this moment, specifically saying he's moving to the PDP. But of course, there are speculations. His deputy has allegedly uh, moved to the uh, PDP and removes the APC flag from his office. What is your take on his, what are his chances if you were to take on the PDP as his party? Uh, look, um, let me, let me, let me, let me, let us call, let us call it very straight. We are faced with uh, a Nigerian populace that are very in tune with the situation on ground. The COVID-19 has not helped the economic situation on ground. Um, the adjusted people have had some succor from this governor in terms of, as I said before, payment of salaries, um, the um, uh, handling, the way he has been able to manage the COVID-19 situation in those states. 
um, uh, the developmental strides that he has uh, he has achieved on ground so far. Um, so this is what it is. Um, there have been a lot of images of, um, on, online showing the deputy governor removing this, the flag of the APC. Um, there have been a lot of um, brooms being dropped and um, some signages uh, online too. Now, what is expected is that the APC and the PDP right now remain on arguably the strongest parties. Now the governor has come out um, to say, look, I'm leaving the APC. So it, is, it only makes logical sense for people to say, even if he has not declared, he's headed to PDP. What it does is that it changes the equation. What it has done now is that it changes the equation because whether we like it or not, he has a flow, the governor has a following. And that following are people who believe that he has performed, are people who believe that he stands a chance. And so what we're going to be seeing, if he does declare for the PDP, which is, which is what is being projected, is that there are a lot of people, structures um, that he hit to held for APC are going to be moving on to the PDP. It is going to change the entire um, projection in Edo State. Uh, we we really will change. stay on this matter for the rest of the uh, review if we don't take a break from it. And so I would say we move on to other issues now. The, the matter just keeps coming up from uh, different angles. But we will continue to try our best to make sense of it as the day uh, progresses. But let's take a look at resident doctors. The Punch newspaper has this one that says, um, resident doctors strike. FG demands attendance registers meeting deadlocked. Uh, what's your take on the federal government's position with this? Um, you know, some say it's a subtle threat of uh, providing registers at hospitals uh, for doctors who turn up for work and those who don't. Um, now, uh, I, I think that the res resident doctors, um, the, at this time where we have this COVID pandemic, um, and with increasing numbers, which you can, as you can see, which has apparently led uh, um, somebody like, I mean, a, a, a personality like, as His Excellency the Governor of Lagos to go ahead and say mosques and churches will not open. This is the time you need all resident doctors, you know, all hands on deck, because we really do. We, this is time to be extra careful. Um, and so, what he says is that I don't think that um, any sort of threat um, would work, or I don't think that any sort of threat is needed at this time. I think that dialogue, um, as always, would serve more. I also, I also suspect that why the government is bringing this uh, register uh, situation out, register tactics out, I suspect that we continue with the dialogue. Because the truth is that we need the doctors working and whatever it is that um, has continued to make this whole strike uh, action, this strike trips first, uh, they have to sort it out and sort it out once and for all, because um, it would not all go very well for um, handling of this particular pandemic as it is. They've done a very right. good job so far as resident doctors, uh, and we need them to continue at this kind of critical uh, time. Uh, I think I was listening to one of the doctors, uh, one of the representatives of doctors on TV, talk about their inability to um, have things like um, safety um, items for the COVID-19. Um, and look, these are, these are issues that are real. And these All are right. issues that shouldn't be coming up at this time. And I think that uh, the government will um, have to, will be forced to look into it as quickly as possible. You don't want to leave the citizens open. Uh, right. This is the time to manage the situation even more than ever before. The numbers, I, 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 I hate to interject, but we have very limited time. And there is this particular story. Yeah. Two, actually, I'm going to tie them together. Uh, one is from the Guardian newspaper and one is from the Punch newspaper. Uh, Naira Mali, executive jet flight, fight dirty, Fashola denies involvement, uh, flying in the time of COVID-19. Uh, then the Guardian is running with this big one as its screamer. Suspense as airlines resume operations without bailouts. There's a couple of riders to that story. 11 carriers await NCAA's clearance. We're checking compliance with safety guidelines, says regulator. What's your take on this um, whole situation? In spite of the lockdown, we see people still flying around. And then airlines are resuming operations without bailout. 
Look, um, there's no there's no easy way to say it. Uh, the the Nara, the Nara Mali, uh, situation, the organizers who 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 organized that show, that should never have happened. It should never ever have happened. Um, what 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 Nigerians need to understand is that um, these are very very unusual times. What we're facing is very serious situation. Um, so um, social distancing, which has been recognized or identified as one of the core strategies to keep this uh, COVID-19 at bay, should be kept strictly. So for you to go, for anybody to go ahead and organize a show that will allow um, uh, an artist like Nara Mali to come over to perform is completely uncalled for. And look, for Nigerians too, they have to, we, have to, we, have to, we have to express some level of responsibility. We need to understand that we owe it ourselves a responsibility to not just um, uh, act, uh, practice social distances, but to stay alive. Um, so anything that is going to make us to be in a situation that will that's in danger, we need to we need to we need to uh, force ourselves to ensure that we stay away from that. As for the airlines, I suspect that um, there has been a level of impunity in terms of um, getting uh, certain approvals for private movements of uh, private movements uh, through airlines. And that is exactly what has played out in this situation. Um, uh, a letter has been circulating also on social media uh, about some kind of apology explanation from the um, it purported with the letter uh, from some, 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 some kind of apologies. And then um, the situation should never have arisen. It's a very, very wrong way of doing things. Um, and I think that um, the government going ahead to shut down, to, um, to uh, suspend the airline is within its right to do so. Uh, I also, we also hear that the FCT has gone ahead to say that look, they're going to take up the um, Nara Mali situation. Uh, I think that this, this, should, this should, I mean, everything that's supposed to be done should be done. For the bailouts, globally, look, globally, um, in the, among the European countries, what we've seen is we've had uh, concrete stories of uh, European governments who have um, come out to al- announce bailout funds for not just sectors, but for the citizens. The United States government came out um, and approved trillions of dollars to uh, take care of, um, to, to try to take care of the citizens and some of the businesses to cushion the effects of the COVID-19. So uh, for Nigeria, it should not have been an exception. We should have seen um, some kind of government steps to help um, cushion these kind of effects because businesses have been hit badly. I believe that the CBN is also doing the same thing. Um, so for, for the airlines, uh, they, they are going to be facing a lot of issues uh, because of the, the capital intensive um, nature of um, handling business for, for the airlines. So you see the airlines have uh, issues of maintenance of flights, issues of tickets that have not been sold for over three months, issues of business, their business. Look, this is a capital intensive business and they, they, they need that bill out. Um, so right, I think that a lot of the airlines who have uh, enlisted to start a business, uh, business are doing day. that to see how they can put together some funds and then go back to making some kind of money at yeah, this uh, critical um, uh, I, I want us to catch a little from business day uh, as we wrap up uh, with this big one here. COVID-19 provide catalyst for economic reforms in Nigeria. This is according to the finance minister. A couple of writers uh, to it. That's it on your screen. Now, what's your take? There's been a lot of talk about creating opportunities from a pandemic situation like it, making uh, good out of something bad, so to speak. What's your spin on that narrative? Yeah, I mean, look, um, this, this opportunity is an opportunity. We've always said it. This is an opportunity for any right-thinking government to latch on to, to try to reposition things, to reduce this expectation um, that is behoving on a supposed economy that is not bogeying, uh, so to speak. So, for instance, you have um, the uh, the uh, oil sector, which has over time relied on on um, importation of fuel and then um, payment of subsidy. Um, one would have thought that at this time, subsidy. This is the kind of time to try to cut subsidy because I mean, um, you see that the fuel prices have fallen. Um, we see that. Um, the, the, the speed at which uh, importation of oil, refined and importation um, is being done has reduced a drastic minimum. So what exactly are you subsidizing? That money that is supposed to have been channeled to subsidy, for instance, would be, should have been channeled 
um, into, into other areas of the economy. As you can see, the fair price, pump price has will be reduced. So in the same vein, um, this is a time for the government to look at um, any kind of bogus expenditure and streamline it to the current situation on ground, especially along lines of the sectors that are here on ground. This is also the time for the government to look away, practically and seriously look away from um, uh, uh, oil and actually begin to diversify. Look yeah, at areas of mining, look at areas of agriculture. We have been mounting this for many years. And yeah, guess what? Uh, I have been interrupting and... you all morning and I apologize. But I've been whispered too that we're out of time for the review of the paper this morning. So I will say thank yes. you very much for your insights to, on the headlines and uh, wish you a lovely thank day. You. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, that's how we wrap things up this morning. But of course, it's important for you to go take a look at the papers yourself, read the stories in detail, so you, you know, balance the perspective and opinions that are shared here with your unique um, thinking. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow morning, 8.30. Keep a date. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I will see you soon enough.